Based in Leek, a small town on the edge of the Peak District, Ruth Tappin is an expert gilder with the Golden Touch. Today she's travelled to Conwy in North Wales, where Drew Pritchard is waiting with an item for her to restore. One of the real joys of doing what I do is you get to go to beautiful places, buy beautiful things, and then you meet the most interesting, skilled and talented people along the way, and Ruth is one of those. Hello. Hello. How, How are you doing? doing? Good, thank you. Good, good. Nice to see you. What have we got? I've got a... Ooh! Italian. Italian, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, 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 I'd say it's late 19th century. Let's call it hall lantern. Yep. Timber and gesso. It's quite naive. It's quite simplistic in its decoration. I like the shape. It's got all of the things that it should have. It's got sprouting cornucopia, it's got a canthus leaf, it's got plums and pears. Has there ever been any wires? Has it been electrified? I think it's just been candlelight its whole life, and I don't think it's had much use. There's nothing for a gas fitting, there's nothing for electrical fitting, and there's very, very minor smoke damage. So I think it's been made, hung, and not really used. This gilded lantern dates back to the late 19th century and would have once illuminated the hall of a grand Italian villa. It's designed to be hung from the ceiling with a central candle sitting behind the glazing. The lantern is missing various pieces of carved decoration and parts of the gilding have worn off completely. All this will need to be replaced if the piece is to be sellable once more. So what I'd like you to do is put, put all the pieces back on that we've got. There's yeah. a couple of pieces we have. We've got cherub's heads. Got cherub's heads on there. It's missing. So there it's go. gone, all right? Oh, quite a bit of gesso coming off here. Can you put it back to as close as it was to when it was new, but with a little bit of age to it, right? But I also do, I do think we need to drop a light into it to make it usable stairs and electric light. Now, some people would want me to regild this some people want me to match it. What do you want? Match. Right. The hard one. The yeah. hard one. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I do like the gold here. See this finish here? Mm -hmm. That colour there and that sort of thing. I like that. OK. And I think when they're all regilded, certain things really benefit from that. I think with this and the, the sort of look of house this is going to go into, they're going to want it to show some age. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of boho, hallway, bedroom. That's where it's going to end up. Yeah, yeah. Worst case scenario, it's worth fifteen hundred pounds. Best case, two 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 fifty. So that's your parameters you need to work to. There's got to be a profit left in it. Uh, at the moment, it's worth about four five hundred quid, tops. Should we put it in the back of the car? Yeah. If we must, yeah. We must. <laughs> okay, we must. brilliant. I've got to be careful. If I do too much sanding and too much perfection, I could blow the budget. So yeah, there's a bit of balance on this one. A short drive later, and Ruth is back in Staffordshire with the Italian lantern in tow. So I think my first job is to try and stabilise some of this gesso because it's lifting away and it's going to continue to fall off. I could just flake it all off, but that's more work for me. So if I can save the original by injecting some glue behind, that would be great. Gesso is the Italian word for plaster and for centuries has been used to provide a smooth surface for gilding. Right, so I've got some syringes. I've got this glue. Now, this is actually liquid at room temperature, but it's still too thick to go through the syringes. So what I'm going to have to do is pour some in my little pot. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water. But what I also want is some alcohol. And what will happen is I'm going to inject the alcohol first, which wets the whole surface underneath the gesso, and then I'm going to put the glue in, because that will help the glue flow. So just... Basically, I'm wetting it with the alcohol. And then... The glue then wants to follow that alcohol. If I did it dry, the glue would just sit on the top. And I've literally got to now go round everywhere where I see these, these gaps.
The glue will take 24 hours to fully dry, but it's only the first step in what promises to be a tricky restoration. So this is really simple, but I do have to make sure I don't have any air gaps. So I've just got to really press it in. That's it. The mould is made from a quick setting silicon putty and after 20 minutes, it's ready to be peeled off the head. Right, there we go. That should be a good mould. So I'm going to put some compo in here so we can recreate the missing head. Compo, short for composition, is a traditional mouldable resin which is soft when warm and hardens as it reaches room temperature. So all the ingredients in here are natural. You've got uh, animal glue, tree resin, whiting, which is chalk, and it's designed to be pressed into moulds. I'm really pressing it in, make sure there's no air pockets. Right, OK, there we go. The compo takes half an hour to set in the mould, after which it can be carefully prized out. It's going to be a bit awkward to get out. Oh, look at that, it's a boy. With a steel rod for support, the cherub's head is bonded to the frame with more warm compo. Right, so I've got my nice warm compo, and so I just get a pinch of that. I'm going to try and get some in that hole. Right, are we lined up best we can that way? I think he'll do. The cherub's head matches perfectly, but this lantern will be defined by the gilded finish still to be applied. In Staffordshire, Gilda Ruth has been patiently waiting for the new moulding to dry on a traditional Venetian lantern. It's been wired to receive electric lighting and is now ready to be re-gilded. So I've got here 23.75 carat. Um, that is what would have been used originally on here. It's very, very thin, so I'm controlling it with my breath. I'm using quite small pieces because this decoration curves in all sorts of directions, so the smaller the piece of gold, the better. So I take some cotton wool and I've got a load of air bubbles and little creases, so the cotton wool I press Right, OK. Let's turn the lights on. Have a yeah, look at it. OK. Marvellous. Look at that. It's really lovely. It's this finish you've put on there. It's a lot more subdued and subtle. Well, I've kept a lot of the original gills as much as I could, fixed the gesso, replaced... I think there was a cherub's head and a couple of these scrolls. Yeah. 
It just looks great. Do you know what? It looks like you've not really touched it. That's what I want. That's what I want. Thank you. Perfect. When Ruth first received this Italian lantern, it was missing key parts of its decoration, and the antique gold leaf was wearing away. Now it's back to its elegant best. Ruth has expertly blended the new gold with the old, and the replacement mouldings are indistinguishable from the original pieces. The lantern has been adapted to house electric lighting and is now ready to illuminate any room. Incredible. I think the age you've put into it, that lovely matte finish you've got to the gold there. Great. You've got some matte and then you've got some... There's some burnish every so often, the light will catch. I can see it, yeah. But it's, it, it's not bright burnish, it's dulled down. Because I like that. It, it will age. It's very saleable. Brilliant. It's really, really saleable. It's not a huge one, so the drop there, it's going to fit in a lot of hallways, this. It'll have to be a period house or something very, very, very modern. It's really beautiful. So we started off with something that was a £500 wreck, basically. I initially, when I first saw it, I thought, we'll get that done, it'd be worth about two, four, two, five, something like that. Looking at it now, I think three, four, three, five is achievable. You've solved all the problems, it's ready to sell, it can be sold tomorrow. Brilliant. It's great. Thank you very much. That's OK. A good restorer will add value. The really good restorers do little subtle nuances that make it something very, very special. Ruth's done exactly that. It's ready to go. It's a real deal Italian lantern. And you can hang it tomorrow and it'll look fabulous. So the thing is with Shia Khan is what you see is what you get. It's, it's like he is completely heart on sleeve. If he doesn't like it, you'll know. If he does like it, you'll also know.
I could just flake it all off, but that's more work for me. So if I can save the original by injecting some glue behind, that would be great. Gesso is the Italian word for plaster and for centuries has been used to provide a smooth surface for gilding. Right, so I've got some syringes. I've got fish glue. Now, this is actually liquid at room temperature, but it's still too thick to go through the syringes. So what I'm going to have to do is pour some in my little pot. And then I'm going to add a little bit of water. But what I also want is some alcohol. And what will happen is I'm going to inject the alcohol first, which wets the whole surface underneath the gesso, and then I'm going to put the glue in, because that will help the glue flow. So just... Basically, I'm wetting it with the alcohol, and then... The glue then wants to follow that alcohol. If I did it dry, the glue would just sit on the top. I've literally got to now go round everywhere where I see these, these gaps. The glue will take 24 hours to fully dry, but it's only the first step in what promises to be a tricky restoration. So this is really simple, but I do have to make sure I don't have any air gaps. So I've just got to really press it in. That's it. The mould is made from a quick-setting silicon putty, and after 20 minutes, it's ready to be peeled off the head. 